my name is Kara, and welcome to the second installation of a three-part series of how to make all three of Naoki Yoshimoto's cubes, each with their own unique shape-shifting ability. Now, before we get started, I just want to say a huge thanks to my friend Hana. You may have noticed my YouTube banner has changed, and it's all thanks to her hard work. She did such an amazing job on this banner, going so far as to trace all the tiny little folds on my origami, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. She also has a YouTube channel where she documents her life as a design student at Rhode Island, which is a really good design school. And I also recommend checking out her adorable designs on Etsy and Redbubble. All of her links will be in the description. And without further ado, let's get started on Yoshimoto cube number two. This one would have to be my favorite of all of the cubes. The first time I made it, I remember spending at least an hour trying to figure out all of the cool shapes that you could transform it into. And one of the most exciting parts of this is combining both sides of the cubes to make all new sorts of shapes. Now to get started, you're going to print six pages of the template to make a full cube, three pages for each side. Here I'm using cardstock, which is a little sturdier than printer paper, but I have tried it with printer paper and it does seem to work just fine. For this version, I do think black and neon colors just bring this model to life, so if you're interested in the paper that I used, I will link that in the description. And that being said, let's get started. Go ahead and grab yourself a ruler and a dead pen. I'm sure some of you can guess what we're doing next. We're going to score along all the lines so they're going to be easier to fold later. Make sure you're making clean and noticeable indentations on the paper. And you're going to go ahead and do this to all the pages that you've printed. Next, you're going to grab your scissors and cut out each module. Every page will have two modules, and you'll need six of them to create one side of the cube. Start folding along all of the lines. I'm folding it inside out because I don't want the ink to show on the other side. And it also helps to run a blunt edge along all of the creases just to make them super sharp. The flap at the end, you're going to fold all the way through at that intersection on both sides, just like this and it should look like there's a tiny upside down triangle on that flap. Now this piece here is made out of a single module. You'll notice if you collapse it, it'll turn into the same shape. There's a flap and pocket on either side to connect to other modules, but it's kind of hard to connect them when it's collapsed like this. So we're gonna glue it together when it's unfolded. Go ahead and grab two modules and a glue stick and glue along the back side of the flap with a tiny triangle. And we're going to attach that to the end of the other piece, creating a sort of chain of modules. If we were to go ahead and collapse all of this now, you'd notice we have two shapes of the loop, but we do want it to be a full loop, so we're going to keep adding to that chain. Take the rest of your already cut out and folded modules. We're going to start gluing them to the end of the chain along that flap at the end until you have a nice long chain of six modules. Again, this is going to make one half of the cube or one loop. Next, we're going to start collapsing this, so grab some glue, some tape, and my secret weapon is a chopstick to spread the glue. We're going to find the end of our chain here and bring this flap down, fold it nice and sharp, apply glue sparingly, and rub it out with the chopstick so you get a nice thin film of glue. I like to use some painter's tape or any tape that'll peel off just to hold it in place while it dries, and we're going to collapse along the overlap to create a sort of pyramid shape and tape it into place. It'll look a little something like this, and we're going to move on to the next module and do the same exact thing. We're collapsing along that overlap and gluing along that flap to create that pyramid sort of shape. Don't forget to tape it into place, and we're going to go through this process three more times. Now, I've said this before, but with white glue, it's really, really easy to use too much. So just keep in mind that you can always add more. Remember, the more that you add, the longer it'll take to dry, and you also don't want to warp the paper if you use too much. Now, at this point, you should have something that looks like this. You can start to peel the tape once it dries. And at this point, we're already pretty close to a functional model. We're going to find this square flap here and fold it up, and that's going to finish the shape. So we're going to want to glue that in place. Again, sparingly with the glue, and we're going to spread that out nice and thin with the chopstick before folding over to glue into place. I think it helps to fold the shape onto itself just to make sure that it is in the right position and then tape it so it doesn't shift while it dries. We're gonna go ahead and do this process four more times, making sure to use the glue sparingly, and you might notice it's starting to look a lot like the final product. Make sure you're testing all the joints and that they're folding flush. This will make for a cleaner and more transformable model, especially if those edges are meeting together really cleanly. We're going to keep on gluing all of those square flaps and taping them into place. You'll have done this five times in total until it looks something like this. Here's a little twirl for a full view, and you'll notice that everything is collapsed except the ends, so that's going to be the next thing we'll work on. Bring those ends together, you'll start to see a loop forming. We're going to glue on the flap with a tiny triangle and attach them to create a loop. 
And from here, we're going to collapse that last module. So fold in on that overlap, glue to create that pyramid shape and tape into place. And you can glue along and fold over that square piece to finish the module. Of course, there's just one last piece to glue here. So position that square flap over and tape into place. Now at this point, you're pretty much done. You just need to wait for it to dry so you can peel off the tape. And once you've peeled all of that off, you'll have one half of the Yoshimoto cube. Although it's functional as is, our model is looking a bit bland and a bit of color really does bring this to life. For the colors, you can use markers. I'm going to be using colored paper. I printed out scaled down versions of the modules that I'm going to cut into tiles and paste onto the model. Flip the model into this position before you start gluing your tiles on. I'm going to be gluing them in a counterclockwise rainbow pattern. So right here, I'm gluing my first color on nice and flush onto that surface. And what happens on one side is going to happen in reverse on the other side. So continue your pattern like so. Of course, it'll depend on the colors you use, but mine looks like this. We're going to flip it around and glue on the rest of the tiles. This time I'm going to be grouping the colors on these spaces here, and it's going to be symmetrical on the other side. This is what it looks like all together. And then we'll turn that inside out and add colors on the other side. And this is what mine looks like. Now this half is functional on its own, but I do recommend making the other side if you want the full cube. And there you have it, your very own functional Yoshimoto cube number two. Once you've mastered this, I recommend combining both loops into a mega loop. It can also transform into a cube and a bunch of really fun shapes. So if you made it, I encourage you to find as many shapes as you can and remember to do up my video on TikTok so I can see all of your creations. If you like this video, I recommend checking out Yoshimoto cube number one. This cube changes colors and transforms. I also make a bunch of really cool origami and craft videos and tutorials here on YouTube and TikTok. And if you're into that kind of thing, I encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss out on those or Yoshimoto cube number three. That being said, thank you so much for watching and I hope you stick around.